absolutely horrifying. Sphagnum moss doesn't provide any nutrients whatsoever to the plant. Keep repeating the same mistakes. Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, I'm Christina from Leafy Luster and today I want to answer the age-old question of when to transfer your propagations from sphagnum moss into soil. More specifically, I have some Hoya cuttings that need my attention and I want to share it with you. Especially as new plant parents, we dive headfirst into propagating and then end up wondering when is the perfect time to transfer my cutting and how much roots does it need to sustain itself and not to die? What are things that I need to look out for? So I want to try and answer some of these questions today. Moss propagation is pretty much carefree and has proven to be quite effective. Theoretically, you can keep your plants in moss forever, but there's one little thing. The sphagnum moss doesn't provide any nutrients whatsoever to the plant. In order to keep plants in sphagnum forever, you would need to fertilize quite frequently. And guys, I'm not on top of that. So for me, something like soil mixed with warm castings or some Osmocote slow release fertilizer, it seems to be the better way to go. But if you want to keep them in sphagnum, you could. I just use this salad bowl takeout containers and put some sphagnum moss in there and then the cuttings. So let's check out the babies. I know for Hoyas you could use various different substrate to put them in. Some people use lacquer or other hydroponic systems but today I'm going to use just some regular schmegula soil because I'm basic. Starting with the Hoya Konyana Super Silver. I have two cuttings in here. These cuttings were in here for seven months now. I have no idea how I was able to procrastinate on them so hard, but you know, time flies, right? <laughs> I fertilized a few times to give them a little bit of nutrients to grow. Looking at the cuttings, they look really good. They already have a ton of new leaves and new growth. And look at those sexy aerial roots. Humidity, baby. In a mixed propagation setup like this, I usually opt for a transfer sooner rather than later. But since I waited so long, I will now have to live with the consequences. I guess the roots will be all tangled up and it will be a nightmare to get them out of here. But Whose fault is that, right? Right, now then, let's just see if we can pull them out. And I think I knew this was going to happen. So I have one solid patch of Hoya moss cutting. I imagine way worse. So the roots actually don't look as bad. And I will try to remove the moss as best as I can because I have found that if I leave too much moss on the roots before potting them, it's an issue with root rot later on. I think it's unavoidable that this is a mess by not using moss, but maybe something like perlite or lacquer. You can definitely avoid this kind of work. Okay, great. I have got my two cuttings separated. In this cutting, I have a little bit more root going on and all of this is a new growth. On this cutting, we have a little less roots. With those two cuttings freed from the moss now, this begs the question, are these roots long enough to sustain our cuttings? I most certainly think so. I would even go as far as to believe that if you have any new root growth whatsoever, the length of the root doesn't matter at all. In my opinion, it all comes down to the conditions you keep your potted up cutting afterwards. For example, if you have a little water propagation, you see some baby roots and you decide to pot it up immediately. Then it's all about the conditions you keep it in afterwards. So keep it in a prop box, a Ziploc bag, a little greenhouse, whatever you can offer. And in this case, you will have high humidity, warmth and bright light. The plant will have the optimal conditions to keep growing and it won't lose as much water through any leaves that might be still on there. So the roots don't have to work as hard, if that makes sense. I'm using my general aeroid mix for all of these cuttings. So if you haven't seen it yet, here is my soil mix video if you're interested. Since we have a lot of roots here to work with, I think I will chop this little propagate <coughs> into two pieces. So we have this one and then this new growth piece. Let's give it a water. It looks a little bit ugly now, but stay with me. It will grow in just fine, I think. 
Next, I want to check on the Hoya Macrophylla albomaginata. It's this one right here. And she is the queen of turtles, a snail, an absolute sloth in terms of propagation speed. She really took her sweet time to root and grow any new growth whatsoever. We have two new growth points on this little cutting right here. Also have a second one, which is apparently even slower because we have this old leaf right here. And then do you see this little stump growing out of the node? That's the only new growth that we got from this one, except for some roots. I got a tip from a subscriber that they tend to root way faster in water. I will try that next time if I have the opportunity. Thank you for sharing your experience. And now let's move on with our cuttings. So let's remove the last of the moss. Ta-da! I think I can't do a better job at this because I would stress the roots too much if I would remove it to the very last piece of moss. I don't want to lose any more roots than I already did. Let's see if we can fit it into this small little pot. It will be a little bit tricky to pot this beast up. It's a close call, but I think it will fit. I don't think it will get any better than this. We have this little growth pond right here and right here. Well, it doesn't look like much now. I hope that once this grows in, it will look a little bit prettier. We have three new growth points on this. Let's see how she fares. Lastly, I have a ton of Hoya Matilde splash cuttings. I think it's enough to make a few pots. Whenever I have multiples of cuttings, you know what that means. It's time for science. The rest of the cuttings in here is Matilde's splash. And then I have two full boxes and look, they are filled to the brim. So I have a lot to untangle here and I will definitely spare you the process. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never... No joke. I don't know why I always keep repeating the same mistakes of propagating in sphagnum moss. The untangling part on this, this whole mess was a nightmare. Some of them have still or again gotten some root rot. I noticed the typical thing happening that the roots just like rip off and you just get this little strand left behind so these are all dead roots and basically for those cuttings i need to start all over again the leaves are still firm and the stem is still firm so i think it's not too bad but a few months are gone because i obviously kept it too moist i think removing the moss from the roots is a lot of stress on the plant this might stunt the growth after putting it up so i want to try something and i already did this on some string of hearts previously but i want to take this whole piece of moss and cuttings and leave it as is and just plop it on top of some soil and hope that the roots will grow through the moss down into the soil and then root this way. For the rest of the plants I will just pot them up as usual. it's quite a bit actually but the roots on some of the cuttings were absolutely horrifying non-existent basically so i'm really kind of scared to see what happens i will put them in my prop box and give them the best possible conditions so they can re-root and regrow hopefully and hopefully they don't rot away at least not all of them if some do that's fine but you know I watered all of my pots and now I'm just going to place them in my propagation box so they can get the best conditions. For everyone who needs to hear this, 
to be honest, I cannot give you a magic number of weeks you need to wait, a specific length of roots to sustain your cuttings. You will just have to observe your cuttings and plants and decide for yourself if they are ready or not. Your judgment will get so much better over time. There are great differences between plant species as well. Some grow very dainty, small and tiny roots and then others grow very thick and big roots immediately and they look like they could sustain a whole family. So you'll just have to observe and see what works for you. On this note, I would love to hear from you how you root your cuttings and how long you root them, when do you decide to pot them up and how do you decide it. I would love to chat with you. For now, I will leave you with this video right here to watch next. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy your plants and goodbye!